All right, good afternoon. Um, the Security Council this morning heard a briefing by the Special Representative of the Secretary General in the Democratic Republic of the Congo, Leila Zarugi. Ms. Zarugi stressed that significant progress in the preparation for the elections was made, with all major political parties being able to successfully enroll candidates for provincial legislative elections. However, she said she remained concerned by the poor implementation of the confidence-building measures, violations of human rights, and fundamental freedoms continue to impact negatively on the democratic space, she said. While the country is focused on the important elections ahead, the security environment continues to be volatile and indeed is deteriorating in some parts of the country, especially in the East and in the Kasais. Ms. Zarugi noted with concern that MONUSCO personnel have been increasingly targeted and in the months ahead the UN mission will operate in an increasingly tense environment faced with high expectations but few resource, fewer resources. She explained that she mentioned not to take this for, as a plea for more resources, but because it is important that we collectively understand that while MONUSCO's resources continue to shrink, its mandate remains the same and expectations only continue to grow. This morning, the Security Council also unanimously voted to extend the mandate of the UN peacekeeping force in Cyprus until January 31st of 2019. And Her Excellency Ambassador Rhonda King of St. Vincent and the Grenadines was elected today as the President of the UN Economic and Social Council for the 2018-2019 term. The new President stated that it will be a defining year which would, could help set a new course for the work of the Council and the high-level political forum. And I was asked yesterday about uh, South Sudan and the initial uh, the initialing of the governance agreement uh, arrangements in South Sudan. I can say that while the initialing of the agreement on outstanding issues of governance by some of the parties participating in the negotiations in Khartoum is a step forward for the peace process in South Sudan. However, other parties still have outstanding concerns that have yet to be resolved. The UN mission in South Sudan will continue to monitor the ongoing discussions as all parties work towards a genuinely inclusive and enduring peace agreement. And a statement we issued last night, uh, the Secretary General strongly condemned the terrorist attacks in Sueda City in Syria. He is appalled by the utter disregard for human life displayed by Daesh. The Secretary General expressed his condolences to the families of the victims of the incident and wishes those who were injured a speedy recovery. Those responsible for the attacks must be held accountable, he said. Meanwhile, today, a Syrian Arab Red Crescent UN humanitarian convoy to eastern Ghouta delivered humanitarian aid provided by France and undertook a health needs assessment. The assistance delivered by the Red Crescent in partnership with the UN including medical, included medical items and non-food items. The UN continues to call on all parties to allow for safe, sustained, and unimpeded access to all people in need in line with international humanitarian law. And you will see that the Secretary General condemned the suicide attack at a polling station in, station in Quetta in Pakistan, also claimed by Daesh in a statement we issued yesterday. He extends his heartfelt condolences to the families of the victims and to the government and people of Pakistan. The UN stands in solidarity with and supports the efforts of the government of Pakistan in the fight against terrorism. And we may have a bit more on the elections later today. And our humanitarian colleagues are telling us that the recovery and response following the collapse of a dam in the south of the Lao People's Democratic Republic continues. As we told you, uh, in addition to the dam uh, break, more than 16,000 people have been affected by floodings in other parts of the country. The dam collapse has also affected northern Cambodia, where some 3,000 people have now been evacuated. And also in El Salvador, there will be a meeting of the country, UN country team tomorrow to develop a plan of action following the declaration by the government of a red alert emergency due to the severe drought affecting some 77,000 corn farmers. Lack of rain led to losses of over 90,000 metric tons of corn, one of the main staple of foods in the country. The eastern part of, the, of El Salvador has reported 33 consecutive days without rain, record temperatures reaching 41 degrees Celsius. 
And a new study launched by the International Labor Organization shows that despite progress being made in treatment that enables people living with HIV to work, they continue to face discrimination when seeking employment as they try to keep their jobs and progress in their careers. The report shows that a large proportion of people living with HIV AIDS are unemployed, ranging from 7% uh, of those surveyed in Uganda to 61% in Honduras. Young people living with HIV especially have a much higher unemployment rate. Another key finding is that many people continue to lose their jobs in, parts of the, in part of fully as a result of their HIV status, and many people are hesitant to disclose their HIV status to employers or even co-workers, and HIV-related discrimination remains a major cause for not receiving job promotion. And I'm delighted to say thank you to our friends in Mexico City, as Mexico has paid its regular budget dues in full. This payment brings the honor roll to a hundred and twelve. Sorry? Twelve. One hundred and twelve. I just said it. So if I give you the answer, you can't. Uh, sorry, that's. Well. All right, so does, does Mexico's con uh, pay payment or contribution, does yeah. that take the UN out of the red, um, given no, uh, the letter that's going around? It, it, it does not. As you know, the, um, the Secretary General has written to staff uh, today, uh, basically um, outlining his, uh, the concerns that he himself has uh, sent on to, to member states about the troubling financial situation that the, uh, the organization is in. The, the issue is really uh, late payments and payments uh, not, not yet received to the regular uh, budget. We've often, at this time of year, are received a kind of a shortfall, uh, but unlike uh, those we've had in previous years, the cash flow has never been this slow so early in the calendar. And it's also part of the broader trend that is concerning, which we're running out of cash sooner and staying in the red uh, longer. Um, the Secretary General has appealed uh, to member states uh, to pay their assessments on time and in full. And obviously, the, the funding shortfall at some point will cause a risk to uh, our ability uh, to deliver our, uh, our mandates. He's also uh, told staff and stressed to member states that uh, we are looking on how to reduce non-staff uh, costs uh, in order to help with this, um, with this situation. If I may just follow up, so yeah. out of 193 member states, I know you're not going to mention those that haven't paid unless you want no, to. No, it's, 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 it's available publicly. So the honor, you know, as, uh, as you know, I mention an honor roll every time we, we pay. Uh, there's a website uh, that shows you who has paid and how much they've paid. And obviously, uh, by doing the math, um, you can, by figure out who's, by us telling you who's paid, you can figure out who has not paid. Mr. Bays. Same subject. Can you give us some idea of the sort of savings he's looking for now, and if this doesn't improve in the near future, what sort of cuts will have to be made? No, no one is uh, at this point talking about uh, cuts. We're not trying to sow uh, alarm. It's a, it's a reminder of member states that, you know, we don't have the same flexibility as governments in terms of controlling uh, income and timing of, of income. We, we rely, uh, the member states set a budget, they vote on a budget, we then rely on member states to pay their, their dues in full and on time. Obviously, we fully understand that uh, some member states have different uh, budgetary years and cal in, uh, calendar, you know, fiscal fiscal years, so that has has an impact. Uh, but this year is worse uh, worse than others. So obviously, you know, we look at anything from uh, from travel to office supplies, things that we can, in, in terms of cost saving, things that we we can have an immediate uh, immediate control over. You, you're saying no one's talking about cuts, but just the example from 24 hours ago of UNRWA. When you don't have right. the money, you're going to have to. Right. No, I, exactly. But I'm, what I'm saying is that we're not uh, uh, we're not at that uh, at that point. It's just it's it's really a strong reminder of member states uh, to uh, to pay their regular budget. Michelle, um, just to sort of follow up from that. Uh, the U.S. is obviously the largest contributor mm -hmm. to that budget. Um, 
I haven't looked at the list, but I'm presuming they haven't paid yet for this year. But are they paid up until this year? And also earlier this year, North Korea was uh, trying to work out a way mm -hmm. with the UN to yeah. pay. Was that resolved? Have they paid and how did they I pay? will check on uh, on DPRK. You know, as for, for the numbers, those things are, are available on the, on the web. We can get direct to, this, to the sites. Mr. Avni. Uh, the U.S. obviously, as you mentioned, there's fiscal years, so the U.S. always pays late. Late uh, is that is the honor roll a way to also urge them to change their timing of their payments? As I said, different countries have different uh, fiscal years. Uh, the honor roll is to underscore those countries that have paid. Uh, their Jews on on time, uh, and we encourage all countries, uh, all countries to do that. But late that late payment has you know has an you know it has an impact obviously on our on our cash flow. Uh, it may have an impact on our ability to uh, to deliver mandates. But that has been a long term practice mm -hmm. due to UN budgetary <laughs> rules, U.S. budgetary mm -hmm. rules, which are different than the UN, and as the biggest. Contributor, I mean, uh, uh, do you want to change it? Is there any? I mean, way I, to ideally, it? I, ideally, uh, all member states would pay uh, their dues uh, by the end of January, but that's not that's not the case. Uh, Mr. Masood, that would be you. Oh, yes. thank you, uh, Stefan. I'd like to know uh, the United States ambassador uh, just said. Uh, on Tuesday, that uh, one of the main reasons for the uh, shortfall in Palestinian uh, funding is because the Arab states are unwilling to come forward and fund. Does the United Nations believe that the Arab states are not coming forward, or the Muslim states are not coming forward? With well, I, I think I, I addressed that at length uh, yesterday. Uh, UNWAS donors are a secret uh, to no one. Those are also publicly available, and everyone can look at who who is giving to UNWAS and by how much, and who is not. So. Yes, sir. And then Joe. Um, two questions, not budget related. Um, first question is: um, High Commissioner Zied um, had uh, indicated in a statement, I believe he released yesterday. Uh, regarding Cameroon, um, urging that the government itself undertake an investigation of alleged human rights yeah, abuses by both yesterday. sides. Yeah. Uh, what I want to know is whether the Secretary General agrees that a government investigation in part of itself is sufficient, or is he looking for an independent case, investigation? I think in a, any case of use of, of, of violence and civilian deaths, it is a primary responsibility for governments to initiate independent uh, investigations. And obviously but, we should, we should we, that's a first step, and then we need to see. But in another context, for example, uh, relating to uh, Israel and Palestine, I believe he has, the Secretary General in the past has Call for an outside independent no, investigation. No, I think he's, that's, uh, yeah. I would correct you. In many cases, in the case of uh, civilian deaths in, uh, Palestinian civilian deaths in the occupied Palestinian territory, we, the Secretary General's initial calls have always been for independent investigations, which is exactly what we're doing now. Well, yes, sir. Okay. I'll ask my other question. Oh, sorry, then we'll come back to you. Thank you, Stefan. Uh, can you give us any uh, information about when the OJA uh, will you utilize uh, emergency fund to support DPRK? Uh, no, but we can ask. I don't have any information on that. Uh, Nizar. Yeah, um, Kuwait and Saudi Arabia declared that uh, they will suspend uh, oil uh, trips through Bab al in uh, the Red Sea Strait. Uh, so uh, also there is an escalation today by Yemen attacking Abu Dhabi's uh, airport. Is, the, is Mr. Griffith uh, addressing any of that? Is he going uh, to do any trips? Mr. Griffiths, the regional? Uh, Mr. Griffiths is, if I'm not mistaken, about to embark on another regional uh, tour. He's continuing his consultations even from, uh, from, from Amman. Oh, is, is the Secretary General going to do any contacts with the regional power uh, readers? Mr. Griffiths region? is representing the Secretary General. He's working in the Secretary General's name. Is often in these cases when it's, it's 
sometimes a, a special envoy, a special advisor will ask the Secretary General to, to make calls, and the Secretary General will make those calls. Rami. Thanks, Stefan. Sorry for arriving late. Um, is, is no the <laughs> Is the SG concerned at all about um, how the, these latest developments, both the Houthi attack or alleged attack on um, the, uh, the Abu Dhabi airport and um, the Saudi decision to stop oil exports, how these things will affect uh, Martin Griffith's efforts? Okay. I think they, what all these events do is underscore uh, the need to put an end to this conflict and to find a political solution, as if we still needed to be reminded after all these years, after all the suffering of the Yemeni people. This conflict is and has been, has had uh, regional implications. Uh, when uh, commercial navigation is, is starting to get impacted, the movement of goods from the global trade is starting to get impacted. Um, all these, the, the continuance of this conflict has many, many implications. Uh, the, the most important one being the suffering of civilians in Yemen, but it obviously has commercial and, and trade implications as well. This should serve as a reminder to everyone uh, to rally around the efforts of Mr. Griffiths and to come back to the table and find a political solution. Yeah. Thank you, Steph. Uh, I have a question on Colombia and the report of the verification mm -hmm. mission that will be addressed later today yeah. by the Security Council. So on paragraph 29, there is uh, the, an issue that says that FARC is creating a list currently of about a thousand former FARC members who have not been included in any kind of toll that the UN has of those who have been demobilized. So in light of these kind of issues, I wonder which is the view of the Secretary General on the challenges ahead that the verification mission is facing right now in Colombia? I'll be honest with you, I, it's not a question I can answer off the top of my head or on my feet, but I will try to get uh, something to you. Yep. Go ahead, sorry. No, Stefan, my question is about uh, Ukraine. Uh, today, a uh, meeting of Norman Forward uh, took place in Berlin, and um, Russia stressed that uh, there is still no um, progress in implementation of Minsk Agreement. Uh, what, um, does the UN have any comments on uh, the situation with Minsk Agreements and also uh, with the situation of uh, possibility of UN mission to Donbass. The uh, the Secretary General, we've always been supportive of the Minsk, uh, the efforts of the Minsk uh, group as a way to find uh, a political uh, solutions, a way to move forward uh, on what is going on in the Ukraine. The lack of agreement and the continuing uh, tension and the continuing fighting we've seen uh, in Eastern Ukraine continues to have a humanitarian impact. I mean, we ha they. The civilian population in eastern Ukraine came through a very difficult winter. We've seen issues around water. Uh, all these things uh, should push everybody um, to support a political solution. Carol. Stefan, can I just get back to the cash shortfall? I'm not sure I understand. Is the, is the cash shortfall a result of uh, more expenditures, no, or the, is it the, more deadbeats uh, in terms of the your your term, not mine. Uh, well, the 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 cash shortfall is due to the fact that uh, about only sixty seven percent of member states have paid their budget dues in full. The way this works is that there is a budget, we plan for the budget, but we don't get the the money to implement that budget at the start of the budget cycle. So that, may, that creates a challenge, and that's why I think I was telling James. We, we, we don't have the, the same tools that, that national governments have to control their own, uh, their own budget. So we have mandates that need to be implemented and activities that need to be, to be done, but the, um, the money, to speak bluntly, trickles in. And we've, we've always worked around that because we've, we've always planned for that, uh, but this year, uh, the drought is coming uh, earlier and harder than it has in previous years. Right, but what, what's the cause of that? Why is this year? Be because we're not, the member states are not paying, uh, not enough member states are paying their budget dues in full. And can I just specify, in the case of the U.S., they're not on the list of 
countries that have paid their dues. So the, is, as I said, the, the, are, are the they withholding the, dues? The, no, no one is, uh, to my understanding, withholding anything. It's a matter of cycle of payments. Mr. Klein, then Mr. Bayes, and Mr. Hefty. First, a very quick follow-up to my previous question on Cameroon, and then my other question. Yes. On the Cameroon, does the Secretary General believe that an independent investigation can be undertaken by a government that is essentially under one-man rule? The president, I believe, has been in for 36 years, and he's running again, something like that. So that's, that's my first question. My other question is a follow-up to Ben's question yesterday regarding uh, uh, the investigation of inner city press. Uh, what I'd like to know is who is going to make the final, final decision on the disposition of that case? Is it going to go up all the way up to the Secretary General, to the head of global communications, head of security? Oh, it's a, it's an issue us? of uh, it's an issue of press accreditation, and it is in, uh, being handled by the Department of Public Information. On um, on Cameroon, you know, I think we said in uh, that there has. The government itself has said they would launch uh, an investigation. Uh, we would want to see that investigation go forward, that independent investigation go forward, and then we can, uh, once those, we, we can then pass uh, judgment or comment on that once that has happened. Mr. Avney and then Mr. Bass, or was it? Um, Do you want to go? So, uh, two questions. One, just to, to, to tie up this whole business with the budget. Uh, and again, with the, the, the U.S. situation, it's been like this for a thousand years or whatever. Uh, the Sometimes US I feel like a thousand-year-old man. Yeah. <laughs> as the U.S. has always paid at the end, towards the end of the year. Wouldn't the U.N. already have adjusted to that factor? Because the U.S. is obviously such a big uh, uh, the, contributor. The US, it, 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 the scale of assessment is public for all. The U.S. is the largest contributor to the U.N. It is not the only contributor to the United Nations. Right. The, the problem is that we, we obviously, we, we know how this system works, and we do, it's not a surprise. What I'm saying, uh, you know, the, the low levels of cash is not a surprise. However, we're experiencing lower levels earlier on in the calendar year. Uh, and that's not, I'm not, no, no one is putting its finger to one member states. It's, uh, the, if my math is uh, correct, we have six, you know, 67% of member states have paid up. Who, who has paid up is, is a public document. Um, it, 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 it's, at some point, you know, you, you, can, you can plan for your, if I could continue with the drought analogy, you can plan for, for water use knowing that there are drought periods and periods of rain. Um, the drought is coming earlier uh, earlier than usual. My point is if the, to, follow, to follow up on your analogy, if rain falls instead of in the summer, it falls in, in instead of in the winter, it falls in the summer, uh, it's still rain. It, what I'm saying is that by now, for so many years, the U.S. has paid, I think in November, I'm not sure exactly mm -hmm. when, and, and, you know, so you have the money from November. You don't have it from January, you have it from November. Right. So it's actually two months earlier, uh, in a way. But th the point is, this is a cycle, an annual it, cycle. It, it's that a cycle that we understand and we, 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 we plan for. Uh, this year, the cycle is worse than it's been. And another <laughs> topic I just wanted to... Yeah. Uh, so on this uh, call for an independent investigation, in the case of Gaza, it, it, usually those calls are made when there's a loss of life, and, and rightly so. Uh, what about loss of property? I mean, there's a large-scale uh, fire situation in the southern of Israel, hundreds mm -hmm. of acres are being burnt. Is that something that the UN should pay attention to, call for I think investigation? We're, I think Mr. Mr. Mladenov has mentioned it in quite detail in his last briefing. Mr. Bayes. But is, does it... I would refer you to his last briefing. I would refer you to his last briefing. Mr. Bayes. The UN uh, Security Council voted on Cyprus this morning. Mm -hmm. uh, does the Secretary General see this as a time of fresh opportunity? And is it time for fresh direct engagement from the Secretary General himself now? Uh, as you know, uh, 
Mr. The, we obviously well, first of all, we obviously welcome the fact that the uh, the mandate was 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 renewed. Uh, Jane Holut has gone to uh, to Cyprus. Uh, she had a round of uh, it was a listening tour. She listened to what uh, the parties had to say. She's back in New York, uh, and then the Secretary General will decide on um, uh, will decide on uh, on next steps. Mr. Klein. Well, again, I'm going to ask a follow up to Ben's question today uh, regarding the question of an independent. I'll get to you. There's no nobody's nobody's leaving this room until the questions have been answered, okay. except for uh, these are. Yes. Anyway, uh, regarding an independent investigation uh, and events in. Gaza and Israel. Um, I, I, I was there for Mr. Madeloff's uh, statement and read it. Uh, the question is whether there should be an independent, outside independent investigation, for example, from the Human Rights Council or from any other uh, unit in the UN regarding the fires and destruction of property in Israel proper. Because again, Mr. Ziad. Um, when he talks about an investigation, he's only focusing on Israel's actions and the killing of Palestinians. I think, first of all, what the Human Rights Council decides is what the Human Rights Council decides. I would, uh, Mr. Bladnov's briefing to the Security Council stands as the last word on our position on uh, what is going on between the Israelis and Palestinians, and I have nothing to add. Sir. Thank you, Mark. Again, on this uh, situation in Gaza, where it is being said that the uh, people, the, the Palestinians are living like a caged animals in that, uh, has the Secretary General or anybody has any talks, latest talk on releasing uh, some sort of aid to the convoys into uh, the occupied Gaza, which have been blocked uh, again Ma and again? Masood, with, with respect, I think that was covered in depth by uh, Mr. Mladenov giving you an update yes. on the latest yes. openings of the Karim, uh, the Karim crossing, uh, where uh, supplies, uh, humanitarian supplies, were let in, fuel was let in. Mr. Mladenov was in Gaza. He uh, was also uh, then in, he was in Jerusalem. He spoke to Israeli, the senior most Israeli leaders in Jerusalem, uh, spoke to the Egyptians. Our focus is on trying to, right now, is on trying to improve the humanitarian situation in Gaza and to avoid any further conflict. Thank you.